guys, it's Christy again, and this week I'm going to be showing you how to paint a Scottish grenadier figure from around the time of the American Revolution, so kind of the late 18th century. Uh, I've got this nice uh, early peri sculpt of a Scottish grenadier officer here that I'm going to be using. I chose him because he's got a fairly simple version of the uniform in terms of, you know, I mean, he's not carrying a lot of equipment or whatever, so it's easier for me to show you the really kind of fundamental, important parts of this whole thing. And the main reason I'm really showing you this uh, model today is because people just keep asking me about painting tartans and kilts. And I have covered it a couple times. I did sort of a video on ancient Celts where I painted some sort of plaid type patterns. And I did another one where I painted sort of a 19th century steampunk kind of adventurer who was wearing sort of a Scottish style uh, costume. But I can understand if neither of those things were really quite what you are looking for. So that's why I'm showing you a really traditional uh, uniform this time around. And yes, it's from the 18th century and, you know, obviously the British Army in particular continued to use this style of uniform kind of throughout the 19th and even 20th centuries. Uh, but I think for most people the really tricky part uh, in any of those cases is painting the kilt and the tartan and it doesn't really matter, you know, kind of what period of uniform you're painting. That should sort of be consistent. And you so, you know, hopefully from watching this, you know, you should be able to get what you need to do that. So at least that element on your, you know, army from, you know, the 19th century or whenever you happen to be painting or maybe even earlier. Uh, I'm going to be showing you uh, the black watch pattern in this case, uh, mostly because it is really, really, really common, uh, probably more so than any other pattern when we're talking about like military <laughs> kilt, I think, and what, certainly what was used by, again, by the Brits. Um, of course, there are others. And the other thing that I think is also relevant here is the black watch pattern is, I think, also compared to some other tartans, a lot easier to paint because it's sort of dark and indistinct. Uh, and so you don't necessarily have to worry about, you know, painting in the same level of detail to, you know, to, to, to create a fact that is pleasing and sort of gives the kind of the impression that you're not, you know, you're kind of aiming for. All right, so as always, I'm starting off with a look at all the paints that you're going to need for this model. Uh, of course, this doesn't include the face and hands. But come to think of it, most of the colors you need for skin painting are in here too. So this uh, selection covers just about everything. Now, because of the hierarchy of uh, sort of elements in this model, I'm actually not going to be starting out by painting the tartan and kilt. Rather, I'm going to be working on his jacket. Uh, and of course, as you might guess, this is going to be red. Um, so I'm just base coating the entire area here with some Vallejo black red in order to get started. My first highlight here consists of a uh, Mephiston red from uh, Citadel, and I'm going to just kind of layer that on and build it up over the red. I I'm not going to worry too much, you know, if this gets down in any of the cracks and crevices. Uh, I'm keeping it thin and pretty transparent, and it's over a pretty dark base, so that's okay. And I plan to build it up a lot more later, and what I want to really avoid is having most of the folds or shadow areas be too extreme, so by letting a little of that sort of first highlight creep down in there, I'm going to make sure it doesn't get to be too strong a contrast when I'm finished. My next highlight here is going to be some Evil Sun Scarlet, and this is again from uh, Citadel. I haven't thinned it too much because it's already a fairly uh, transparent color, and I'm really going to uh, apply a lot of layers uh, of this onto the model. I'm still working with a number uh, one brush here. You shouldn't need anything too, too precise. And you'll find you can apply quite a few layers of this uh, color. Uh, before you've kind of reached uh, maximum saturation. Now, depending on how ambitious you're feeling, you can kind of get away with just highlighting with those uh, two shades of red that I just used. But recently, I've started uh, trying to get a little extra high highlight on my reds because I think it just adds a little bit more extra contrast that I like. And what I did here was just take some of that Evil Sun's uh, Scarlet and I uh, 
Made it a little bit lighter using some Vallejo uh, basic skin tone. Not too much, you don't want it to be too pink, and you also really, really want to keep this paint thin so it's transparent and a lot of those under colors really show through when you apply it. Uh, and I'm using a number zero brush now because it's a lot easier for this kind of thing. I'm going to use it to really sort of carefully define the edges of any sort of uh, sharp creases or folds on the figure. And this, in this case, that's mostly going to be on his sleeves. So now I'm ready to move on to the tartan. Uh, I'm going to be base coating this with a mixture of dark Prussian blue and black. I want a really, really dark color here. I'm also going to take this opportunity to paint his uh, cuffs and turnbacks, basically all those areas in the same color because I want them to be uh, blue on this model. Now I'm going to start working on the pattern. I've got some uh, Vallejo black green here and I'm still working with my number zero brush because when you're doing any sort of fine detail or pattern work like this it just gives you a lot more control. Um, what I'm doing first with the black green is applying really broad uh, wide horizontal strokes um, sort of all across the tartan areas and then once I've done that I'm going to go back in and apply wide vertical strokes going down. Uh, you want to make sure that you leave room in between the crosses so you Ideally, actually, should have sort of little uh, blue uh, squares sort of in between, uh, if that makes any sense. One of the really tricky things I actually found, when, especially when I was doing these sort of early layers on the tartan, was all the colors are so dark that there's very little contrast, and it can be extremely difficult uh, to see what you are doing. Because of the visibility problem, I was really eager to start highlighting as quickly as possible so that I could really start seeing better where things were in the pattern. Uh, I've got some just uh, pure dark Prussian blue here. I might have lightened it already with a little Luftwaffe uniform just to make it slightly brighter, but I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm just going back in with this color now and uh, picking out the blue squares that are sort of in between my uh, green uh, cross, kind of cross-hatched pattern. Um, <clears throat> Particularly on the back of this sort of tartan fabric, you've got this sort of, um, I guess, um, billowing area, a fabric with lots of wrinkles and creases in it, uh, and so it can be kind of hard really to make sure that you have a consistent even pattern all over the whole surface. Don't worry about that. The main thing is you want to make sure that where there are big flat areas that you're, you're clear about the pattern, but in other areas if it gets like a little messier or less consistent that's okay because all those wrinkles are really going to conceal everything. The next step is uh, to find all the uh, sort of areas where the green crosses intersect each other and then paint that area in a brighter green shade. I'm using deep green for this which is I like. It's a really nice color. It's got the, it's kind of a rich a really saturated green. It's really pretty uh, and it won't feel too intense if you apply it over these much darker colors. So I'm just going in again and you know painting those intersections on my crosses uh, and again as I said in the last step if you encounter lots of dense wrinkles and creases like up towards the top where the fabric is really gathered don't worry too much if uh, again the pattern st stops making sense just make sure that you've got a sort of a good sort of a percentage of all of the colors we're using here involved so it looks like there's the idea of the pattern still being there even if it's you know if it's if even if it doesn't completely uh, make sense. I decided to continue highlighting the green squares even further. What I've done here is just mix a bit of the Vallejo basic skin tone into my green just to lighten it a little bit make it a little bit brighter and I'm just going to be uh, focusing particularly on squares where they are kind of crossing really sharp creases or folds or anywhere where I've got a really big clear square so it's not really obscured by the fabric and I'm really making sure that I'm you know really highlighting that up and making it really distinct and really defined so you know just to make sure that the visibility of the pattern is really improved further. And now I'm basically doing the same thing with the blue squares. I've got almost pure uh, Luftwaffe uniform here and I'm going over the squares that are blue, same as I did with the green, and just uh, making sure they're really um, obvious, uh, and, you know, you can really see where they are and really making sure, especially over the t tight 
creases on the shoulders and on the back, you get some real clear idea that there's areas of uh, blue and green uh, there, even if it's not really clear uh, that they are kind of full square sort of shapes. I'm now going to add another element to the pattern. I've taken some black here and I've added just a little bit of the dark Prussian blue, but not very much, just kind of to take the edge off the black color. And uh, I've got my paint nice and thin. And what I'm going to do here basically is use this color to outline uh, all of the squares uh, in the pattern. So this needs to be not too thin a line. You don't want it hyper thin, but at the same time you don't want it really, really thick. It shouldn't be as wide as the squares themselves, sort of in between. It's not a very hard thickness to paint. You can control this pretty well. And so you can see I'm just going back and forth both horizontally and vertically and making sure that we get this sort of nice uh, dark blackish border on sort of all sides of the shapes. And next I went in with some more of the black blue mixture and I'm using my number zero to very lightly indicate some very thin little crosses inside uh, my squares. And I'm only really doing this on squares where the whole shape is clearly visible and on ones that aren't too dark. So like the really dark green or really dark blue squares in the pattern, you don't really have to do this because you're not really gonna see it. But you know, it's, it's worth doing on um, the squares that are brighter and more highlighted. And you want this to be really thin, very light. Don't make your paint too thick. And you, you know, just if you have sort of thin transparent lines, that'll look really a lot better. I then went ahead and used um, a wash down in all of the really deep creases uh, and folds in this uh, model and it's a lot. So this is, this is obviously a pin wash. I'm using a thin brush because I don't want the wash getting anywhere else and it's a good way to help shade this pattern. I'm just working uh, with Nuln Oil here from Citadel because it's nice and black and that's fine here. Uh, you probably will want to build up several layers, especially down in the deepest creases uh, and folds. And this is already a really dark looking pattern, but this is just an extra way to get a little bit more contrast sort of on the uh, dark end of things that we didn't, you know, already have. I'm now just going to finish up the tartan by doing various cleanup work on it. Um, for example, I'm going back over and sort of re-highlighting the blue uh, squares and the same with the green squares using those bright highlight colors I worked with earlier. Uh, and if that destroys some of the crosses, I'll go back and paint those in. Uh, it's just wherever I think it needs a little extra work or a little brightness, because obviously the wash is going to kind of maybe make some things murkier than you want. Um, I, I'm even using some of the black green to re-highlight some of the dark green squares where I feel like they just got too black, you know? So I'm gonna pull even those up a little bit. So this is really just sort of a polishing sort of round. I also applied a, a layer of matte varnish to the whole tartan because it made it a lot easier to see because those dark blues and greens were really drying, not very matte. Now I'm going to go work on the facing color, which you see here on the cuffs and the sort of the lapels and the collar. Uh, and as you already knew, I was going for blue. So I'm just really quickly highlighting that now, uh, first with some pure dark Prussian blue. And then I'm just going to mix in some of that Luftwaffe uniform to get a lighter gray blue for my kind of final highlight. But realistically, you're not even going to really see very much of this, at least on this particular uh, figure, especially since you're going to have uh, piping and, you know, buttons and trim and stuff going over top of most of it. Now I'm going to be doing sort of the white and gray areas on this model. Obviously a big part of that is going to be uh, his socks. They are going to get a pattern lighter, but it's easiest to base coat them in white first. Uh, I'm using a Vallejo Sky Gray for this purpose. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and work on all of his piping and do that uh, in white. So that's sort of the sort of, sort of, you know, I don't know, the borders on his buttonholes, on his cuffs, and on his lapels, and uh, that kind of thing, really. Uh, full disclosure, the combination of piping and uh, facing color that I use here doesn't really exist on any uh, Scottish Grenadier Regiment. Uh, I kind of made it up uh, because I like that combination of silver and blue, uh, <clears throat> and I just wanted it. Uh, so it's not real. If you're going to really be doing this, you know, make sure you look up your regiment you're painting and get the right uh, combination. Uh, 
it's true that there are some units that would have had white and blue if they were enlisted, but this is an officer, so that basically uh, never would have happened as far as I'm aware. So yeah, this, this, this is not uh, basically a historically accurate combination, but I think it's a pretty one and you know, I'm being a painter mostly concerned with uh, the aesthetics at this point. I'm now going to be highlighting uh, his socks and some of those other areas that I just base coated. Uh, with the socks, I've made a mixture of the silver gray and some white, and I'm just going to kind of go over and build it up. Uh, you saw me in the beginning kind of started doing a little work on the uh, sort of where the sock is rolled over. You don't have to paint that white. It's going to be red, so don't waste your time on it, I guess. Um, but this sort of intermediate color, I'm just going to be kind of building it up on the socks. Uh, and any other areas where there's a lot of white, or a fair amount of white, at least like on his collar there, and on sort of his sleeves where they're peeking out from under his cuffs, uh, you probably want this intermediate shade. But on the rest of the piping, with really thin areas, don't waste your time. It, it really won't show up. It'll be fine. We're just, we'll just go right to white, and that's good. Yeah, now I have just moved on to the pure white and I'm applying my sort of final highlight on these areas and uh, you can see I'm using the white to just do a single highlight on all of the on all of the piping on his uh, shoulders and on uh, his cuffs and to just really brighten up all the other areas with a couple of layers. Uh, a little bit of a tip when you're painting those uh, shoulder bits uh, if you feel like there's not enough contrast between the white and the red, you can fine line the white with some of the black red just to add extra sort of differentiation, I guess. And it gives it also a nice 3D effect, which is certainly very relevant here because these piping there on the sleeves would have kind of stood out a little bit from the fabric. Now on his socks, he's got kind of a red uh, crosshatch pattern. and. It's basically a mixture of sort of white and uh, red thread woven together. <clears throat> so the stripes are gonna appear a little bit kind of pinky. So I made this color by mixing some um, uh, Mephiston red with some white. So I just got kind of a raspberry pink shade and <clears throat> I'm just gonna carefully uh, sort of work out where I want my lines to be. And getting this really even uh, and consistent is really tricky. Uh, so I had to go back a couple times and, you know, redo some things, try to get the spacing right. And don't worry too much because, you know, you're unlikely to be looking at the model from all directions at once. So if there's some weird kooky things going on with the pattern, you're not going to see it too much. Uh, and I'm then going to go back uh, once I painted the stripes in one direction and sort of make that cross hatch uh, going the other direction and again after I do this I will see more things I need to fix so that the pattern uh, is even looking. I'm now going to grab some Evil Sun's Scarlet and wherever those crosses intersect I'm going to make a bright red square and that kind of simulates the effect that you've got these red and white threads interwoven but where, sort of in those areas where the red uh, crosses then you've got sort of twice as many red threads sort of intersecting and crossing with each other so you get like that brighter red square in those locations. So I'm just going to sort of build that up a little bit uh, and you know just try to make sure I get sort of neat even looking uh, squares as best as I can. I'm then going to add a little bit of extra white to that pink shade that I initially used to make the lines and I'm just going to add some real careful highlights uh, here and there on my uh, lines and just try to get them a little bit neater because I got some places where the, the crosses were not really in the right place and I had to kind of go back and redraw some whole lines. Uh, this is one of those things you can kind of futz with a bit. I also had some white on hand while I was working so I could clean up the edges of the white squares as well and sort of correct their shape kind of as needed. Now I'm going to be painting the cuffs on the socks and I'm really using the same procedure that I did on his jacket. So I'm base coating um, these areas first in black red uh, and then I'm going to highlight with uh, Mephiston red though I'm again like on the jacket to make sure I get pretty you know, consistent, albeit uh, thin coverage over the whole area, even down in the folds and wrinkles, because especially if you're looking at that, that red cuff in contrast to the rest of that sort of 
um, plaid sock down below. Uh, you, you really don't want it to be too, too dark. It needs to be relatively light. So, you know, you want to make sure at least some of that bright red gets everywhere. But I am going to build it up kind of more on the higher sort of creases and wrinkles in that fabric. Uh, and then after that, I just moved on to Evil Sun Scarlet, uh, and that I really did just apply as a highlight color on the sort of the lightest areas of the most kind of relieved areas and not down in the folds at all, uh, building it up as necessary. Uh, and then I finished just like on the jacket by mixing some of that Vallejo basic skin tone into my Evil Sun Scarlet and very carefully with a very sort of light touch and a thin brush um, I did just did some very uh, thin kind of highlighting on the folds and creases which is really really important of course here especially because we want it to not look again as I said too dark in relation to the rest of the sock down below now I'm moving on to the black, kind of black gray areas in this model, which are all going to be mostly leather things like uh, his shoes, his cartridge or patch box, uh, a bit of his kind of sporin on the front, his um, scabbard on his sword, and the sort of the uh, baldric that he's got his sword hanging on. All that stuff, as far as I can tell, should be uh, black kind of type thing. So I'm just going to start out, as always, by making sure all those areas are uh, base coated in a good even layer of black paint. My highlight procedure here is pretty standard. I just started out by mixing some sky gray into my black. At first, not very much, and I'm just going to start uh, building up some highlights on all those black areas, uh, keeping it really subtle at first. You don't want a very big step in color, as always. You want to kind of work up to that. So uh, the first kind of highlight you can be pretty general with. Apply it pretty much everywhere. Uh, and then after that, I'm just going to kind of mix in successive uh, uh, dilutions with the sky gray uh, to get increasingly lighter colors uh, and I'm going to be just applying less and less of the color as it gets lighter and kind of really once you get sort of up to the top of that range you want to have uh, very little you're just going to be putting on very small uh, thin stripes mostly or sort of edge highlights to indicate uh, sort of shine or reflection a little bit on, on the leather surface um, I usually even finish with one really shiny highlight of just pure sky gray, but I always tend to reserve that um, really for areas where there's just like sort of really clearly light, really reflecting off of the leather. And I try to keep my paint really thin and really diluted when I do that. Uh, now I've got some German camouflage black brown. I'm going to be using that here to base coat uh, the fur on his hat, um, sort of the fur trim on his spore on there that's hanging down the front again, and also the uh, strap on his musket, which seems to uh, mostly have uh, been uh, a dark brown color. Once I finish that, I'm also going to go ahead and base coat the stock on his musket, which is going to be wood, of course, uh, and I'm going to be base coating that just using uh, some chocolate brown. Now I'm uh, highlighting the wood again, some more on the musket. Uh, I, I took first some chocolate brown and mixed in some saddle brown because I decided I wanted kind of a reddish look to my wood. Uh, so I've got this 50-50 kind of mix that I'm applying first to the wood areas uh, and just kind of, you know, keeping it thin and really blending it out. And you can see I'm building it up. Um, I then went ahead and just took some pure saddle brown to continue the highlighting process uh, to get it a little redder. And then I finished uh, by mixing a little bit of the basic skin tone into my saddle brown uh, and using that really as kind of an edge highlight, uh, you know, where there's kind of separations in the wood. And it also gives a little bit of a shiny effect because, you know, this wood is fairly highly polished. I'm going to work now on the leather strap on the gun. Uh, I, I'm going to first highlight it with some chocolate brown um, and then go ahead and add additional highlights uh, with a mixture of chocolate brown and cork brown uh, followed by just some pure per cork brown along the edges. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to be working a bit more on the hat. Uh, I'm taking some pure chocolate brown and very lightly overbrushing it, especially towards the top of the hat more strongly and then letting it be darker sort of towards the bottom. I'm keeping my paint real thick here because that makes it easier to apply just to the surface and not have it kind of sink down in the cracks. If it's thin, it'll do that a lot more easily. I'm doing the same thing on the sporin too. I kind of want it to have sort of the same uh, colors really. Um, 
I also use that same sort of chocolate brown cork brown mix that I made for the leather strap to all add some more of that sort of light highlighting effect to the fur hat but again really only uh, just to the top in that case um, I really want this sort of grading effect where it's a little lighter kind of looking at the top of the fur and darker towards the base uh, don't forget to the grip on his uh, sword it should also be leather or at least I think it should so you want to go ahead and paint it in the same way you did the um, gun strap Now the fur on his hat really should be quite uh, dark indeed. So right now I'm using some Agrex Earthshade Wash and I'm gonna go ahead and apply that pretty generously over the entire fur area. I'm gonna be doing that too on the spore end because again, it's the same sort of hairy thing. I want some extra definition. Uh, once that's dried a little bit, I'm gonna go back in with some non-oil and I'm gonna apply that, but more selectively. So with the hat, it's really only gonna be down towards the base of the hat and sort of extra dark down there. Uh, and then sort of lighter more to the top. So, you know, kind of focus your washes a little bit. I'm gonna take care of his hair now because I hadn't really painted that yet. Um, I want it to be black, mostly because I wanted to have a good contrast with all the brown of his fur hat. Uh, you could do brown too though, I'm sure, or blonde or whatever you like. Um, so I'm base coating with black. I also base coat the front of the plaque on his hat. That's gonna have a lot of metal on it, but the backing area was sometimes kind of an enamel black, so that just adds contrast anyway, which will be helpful. Uh, after applying the black base coat to his hair, I'm gonna mix some chocolate brown into the uh, black and start highlighting. Um, so his hair's not really gonna look brown, but that brown, or brown, but the brown in the black, I should say, will really help uh, warm it up a little bit uh, and give it a, a nice sort of tone that's not so cold as sort of the blacks on other areas of this model. Because he actually has this fairly complicated uh, braided hairstyle, it's kind of easier to paint than some other hair that's more loose and flowing because you can really see the areas you need to highlight. I just took that that brown black mix and added some sky gray in it to kind of make some extra highlights on the hair because I wanted to wanted it to get lighter but I didn't really want it to get any browner so that's why I didn't really lighten it with any more sort of brownish shades. I'm going to be uh, painting metal areas on this model now. Um, I'm starting out with a mixture of black and Vallejo Air uh, gun metal uh, and obviously that's gonna go everywhere that's metal to start. Like, so the handle there, you can see the grip or basket on his uh, sword, uh, his belt or his shoe buckles, um, the hardware and barrel on his gun, uh, the plate on the front of his hat. Uh, there's all these little buttons and such. They need to all be this color. Uh, there's a lot of metal on him, particularly because he's an officer and it's pretty blingy. He's also got that gorgat around his neck. Um, so lots of areas to base coat here. Uh, I then went ahead and mixed a little bit more uh, gunmetal in uh, to make a sort of a secondary highlight, which I then again applied, uh, particularly to the areas that were larger. So, you know, on things like tiny buttons or stuff like that, or the buckles, I didn't worry about all these sort of intermediary metal highlights, but they are nice on the gun barrel and the gorget and things like that. Um, and I, in that same vein, I then moved to just pure gunmetal um, and continued highlighting the larger areas just, just so I could really build up more just levels of sort of kind of subtle contrast in the metallic bits. But again, because this is an officer with a lot of sort of shiny silver kind of things going on, really the gunmetal is not enough on its own. So now I've got some Vallejo Air Silver. And I'm going to continue highlighting most of the metal with this. So you can see the basket on his, you know, the guard on his uh, sword, his belt buckles now, uh, all the buttons, everything I'm going to go over uh, with this really bright silver highlight, the gorget, um, the sort of the plating on the front of his helmet, all of that. I'm using a really tiny uh, number zero brush for this again because it's real fine work. Um, I've got my paint pretty thin. You don't really need to thin it very much because it's uh, air airbrush paint uh, and yeah you, I'm just gonna go over those areas and really build up a lot of shine obviously I'm gonna be leaving all the gun hardware alone because I don't want it to be this bright and shiny there isn't much in the way of brass on this model just a little bit of uh, some 
hardware on the gun. So I'm just base coating that here first with a mixture of um, German camouflage black brown and Vallejo Air Gold and then just following it up with a pure gold highlight. I don't need it to be very shiny here uh, and depending on the officer you're painting you may have more areas of gold that you need to paint on this model but I tended to go with just the whole silver route in, in this case. Uh, I then went ahead and finished the top of the hat oh, in red. I painted it black red first, of course, and then highlighted with Mephiston red, uh, followed by the Evil Sun Scarlet, and then a mix of the Evil Sun Scarlet and the uh, basic skin tone again, just to get an extra light highlight. It seems that the regimental number might have sometimes been painted on the top of the hat uh, in Roman numerals, but it's not totally clear, and I didn't want to do it anyway because this uh, unit is, this guy is kind of made up in terms of his uh, trim colors and piping colors, like I said, so I couldn't really assign any real regimental number to him anyway, so I just decided to go ahead and leave this area just red with no extra detailing. All right, so here is our um, finished uh, Scottish Grenadier from around the time of the American Revolution. Remember, again, as I emphasized several times, this is not based on any real regiment. There's a combination here of uh, facing and piping colors that would not, as far as I know, have existed on any officer in any regiment at the time, but I picked them because I like them. And it's, it's certainly not an implausible combination. It's not like I painted them pink and green or some crazy thing like that. It certainly makes sense as a thing. It just isn't it is just isn't real so make sure that when you go paint these guys that you get you know the right combinations and don't just blindly follow what I've done here because it probably won't be real um, but that said I really like how this model uh, turned out I had a lot of fun painting it it is very complicated something like this there's a lot of pattern work a lot of colors uh, it's gonna take you a, a lot of time especially on an officer like this where you've got extra sort of fancy equipment and extra metallic stuff you have to worry about it's not an easy figure um, and you know but on their hand it's very impressive when it's finished it's you know it's really gonna be worth it um, uh, certainly a unit of these on the table will blow everybody's minds if you uh, have the patience uh, to, co to um, complete one. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please like it, uh, share it, leave me uh, comments with what you thought, and um, subscribe too, naturally, if you haven't gotten a chance to uh, do so already. And that's all for now, and I will uh, see you next time.